Okay, we're just about done with the panel. Woohoo! Let's uh, check out some finishing touches. Um, I've gone ahead and modified all the shapes of my character just to make sure that they uh, were correct as you can see here. So each and every one I went ahead and just modified some points just to make sure that it really looks as good as possible. Um, here's my actual panel. Let's go ahead and select its parent which is this uh, board here. Middle mouse click on the board. Let's move it around. Uh, notice that when you move it around there's nothing that's changing. That's really important. That, that tells me that the, uh, uh, the actual panel is working correctly. Great. Now let's go ahead and uh, see that uh, in object view. That's good. And um, everything that is supposed to be unselectable should be unselectable. That will make uh, selecting my controllers a lot easier. So I've gone ahead and created an envelope, actually the unselected panel parts group here. Open it. Open the property page. Selectability and do not allow selecting members. Great. Let's go ahead and uh, create an actual uh, expression for the face. Let's do something like um, a smirk. So on the left brow, we will do a uh, smirk crush. Okay, notice that it's crushing uh, towards the face and also it's uh, squashing at the same time. So on the other side, we'll do the opposite. Here we go. What's interesting is that uh, the color also changes on the controller, which is kind of nice. Great. Now, don't forget that this is a film quality rig. <laughs> so we have control on the actual squash and stretch here. We want to stretch, uh, stretch this upwards and uh, squash this, meaning uh, downwards. Great. That looks awesome. So finally, the mouth here. Um, we have this smirk slider. Uh, which way to go? now? Uh, usually when you're making a smirk you want to go this way basically when you're squashing uh, the left side here you want the mouth to basically stretch towards the left side to basically do the opposite as you're uh, bringing this closer you want to bring the mouth away as such so this would be a pretty good um, smirk also don't forget that you have control on the actual eyes Notice that I have put my two uh, controllers right next to each other so I can control them uh, indiv uh, individually or um, both at the same time. Okay, let's bring this a little bit higher. Awesome. Okay, um, it's convenient the way you can reset everything. Simply select all the controllers and transform reset all transforms or just reset translation great let's uh, go ahead and do a mad or angry now at the top here I've called it mad uh, on the brows so go ahead and exaggerate on that great this one too great and we also have the angry on the expression here don't ask me why I didn't call it mad. <laughs> uh, maybe at the end I'll call everything angry or mad. So notice that I really, really push the expressions. That's important uh, when dealing with cartoon characters as such because a lot of uh, students, I see them go like uh, just here and, and it's really not enough and then they kind of regret it. So it's important to push your poses. That way uh, when you want to have an exaggerated angry, uh, you, you make it like this. Now. Notice that he really looks angry. I can also play with the uh, eyes here. And also with the stretch and squash. Great. There's a lot of control there. Notice that the lattice is being controlled. Uh, it's controlling the whole eye region. Now, this is really decent. When I think of angry, I think of like Tasmanian devil angry, you know? So try to exaggerate. Um, let's bring everything to default. Yep. Middle click, it will invoke the last command. Great. Now, uh, as I watch cartoon uh, animated series, 
uh, be it on uh, DVD or, or on TV, I notice a lot that animators play with the uh, up and down motion of the actual eyebrows. This is really important. It really helps to give life to your character. As your character talks, make sure that you animate this. Okay, and um, whoop, let's do. Here we go. Let's set a memo cam here. Remove this one. Yeah. Uh, also, yeah, when animating uh, the up and down, for instance, let's go here, up and down, uh, on the actual eyebrow, we can set a key here, click K, there we go. Uh, notice that I'm set to key mark parameters, that's great. Let's go a little bit further and um, bring this all the way up a little further bring this all the way down great now let's open the animation editor click zero on the slider this is the way that I um, um, animate by using the F curve instead of animating via the actual slider it works a lot better so basically you hear the actual sounds and expressions that you've already done and basically with the eye shortcut add keys accordingly also move them great finally let's reset that yes on the actual eyebrows we have a lot of control here we go let's unselect this one and select this here. Click 9 to open the schematic view. Notice that via the mixer and the controllers here, I'm driving these actual objects okay, on the browse. Great, but what we need to do now is hide them and expose the actual deformers. The reason why this is important. Let me just do some undos and unhide these objects. Because they're being driven by the mixer, the mixer has control over the animation editor. Any animation that I do here will get overridden by the mixer. And I can prove this. Notice that if I take this object and translate it, let's exaggerate, like right there, and then move the timeline here so it can refresh, it will refresh to the shape of the mixer. Okay, and this is not what I want. So what I want to do is basically hide these actual objects. Let's just remove the animation here. Remove animation from transforms and reset that for the time being. And go ahead and select these objects. Okay, and we want to hide these because they're being driven by the mixer and I want to expose their children. Great. Now, these are color-coded because of my envelope. They are deformers after all. So select them. Uh, actually, let's go into this panel here, the little palette. Click black and just uh, correct them, make them black. That way it will be more obvious that I can actually animate those objects. So now that means that I can do a, um, let's say, a mad here. Great. And actually go ahead and select any object and really push it the way I want. Personalize it. Even rotate it. Okay, and then save. Here we go. There we go. And even uh, save a uh, rotation and translation key on these objects. So that's pretty important to have that added layer of control on the eyebrows. And that was it for the actual panel. Thanks.